Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome nice. to the newest and um, different version of History Loves Company. Today, with uh, I'm Amy Reed, and this is Krista McKay. Krista McKay. And this week and next week, we will be inside doing something a little different. We decided to do an unboxing video. So, um, similar to what the kids are doing these days on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But this one will be a little different because Krista has I selected, selected items from our archives that she says I have not seen before. This I know you haven't okay. seen before. Okay. And uh, which we we have many items that I haven't seen. Um, I've seen a lot, but we have how many items in our collection? Oh, I mean, fifty thousand plus. Yes. Yeah. So I haven't seen them all. No. Um, so what we're going to do is she has hand selected them, and I'm going to go through them and see if I can possibly identify them, discuss them, figure out what's going on here, and we'll just we'll have fun with that. Um, but before we open the box, we wanted to take a minute to uh, discuss a little bit about our roles here at the museum because when we're out and about on the streets we give you our titles but we don't always talk about what we actually do here at the museum the marietta museum of history um and so we're going to talk about that yeah. you want to um so what's in this box is why what my job is i'm my job is to know where everything is at all times in this museum and if it's outside, which we do have, a, uh, we have occasionally loaned things out, um, but that's my job is when it comes in to catalog it, give it a number uh, so that I can find it later or Amy can find it later or whoever follows in our giant footsteps uh, can find later too. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have hard shoes to fill, <laughs> those people. Um, I don't know. <laughs> but like the other thing we wanted, I wanted to make sure before Amy tells you, what she does is because you see the two of us together and it's because our jobs while it, they have their own pathways they merge more often than not absolutely um, so while we do separate tasks um our jobs require and gratefully that they we work together so yes. and we're at um 16 years of working together. Yes, I think we've yes. got pretty good at it by now. Yeah, we kind of know. We finished each other's sentences, as many of y'all yes. have noticed um, <laughs> through the videos, through the, the past year that we've been doing these. And so, yes, yeah, so my job here, I my title is curator. Um, a longer version is curator of exhibits and educational programming. But uh, basically, I maintain uh, the permanent exhibits that we have. And through that maintenance often is refreshing, um, moving items in and out, mm -hmm. creating new labels, the graphic design work that goes into that, the, the physical printing of the labels and mounting them and all of that. So that comes through my office. And then also creating the temporary exhibits that we have on display, coming up with new ideas of what we can not only display from our archives, but also stories that we can tell. We have, as we said, 50,000 items that are really interesting items, but that they're just a, a, you know, a piece of, of uh, carbon without a story behind it. They're, they're, so it's, it's our job to work together. I will go to Krista, I'll say, okay, what do we have a lot of? You know, do we have a lot of quilts? Do we have a lot of photographs of this particular incident or particular uh, time period? Do we have, you know, what do we have that can merge together to create a whole story about something? <laughs> a certain time period, we did a, a, a exhibit. One of my favorites was on oh, the Progressive Era. Yeah, that was really good. That one. was fun. Um, Neath the Southern Moon, and so, and I'll go to Crystal and say, okay, I want to do an exhibit on the time period of 1910 to 1920 in Marietta. What do we have in our archives that can help mm -hmm. tell that story? So we work together in that way, and yeah. then actually putting the exhibit together, we both handle the items. Uh, physically putting them out and then taking an exhibit down as well. Um, that's my favorite. I love taking and see, down that works great because to me that's like cleanup. I don't I like cleanup, so I just I'll take it down and I'll hand it over to her and she'll box it up and put it or back. Sometimes where it needs I'll to go. just say, "Don't worry about it. I got it. I got it. I yes. got it." Yeah, so she can she can put it away back, you know, and and the the archives, mm -hmm. uh, which for those who don't know. The majority of our archival items are on the third floor of our building, so yes. the Kennesaw House, where we're at right now. The third, the entire third floor is just cram packed with 
wonderful pieces of history from our community. There are a number of items and places that have holes, which I've mentioned a number yeah. of, you know, times in our videos, um, specifically minority histories mm -hmm. and, um, you know, uh, women's history, African American history, LGBTQ history, all kinds of things like that. We are always looking for items like that, especially. Mm -hmm. So, that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, so, so Amy is wearing today. gloves. Um, we don't always wear gloves, but once um, she sees what's in the box, she'll know why. Um, <laughs> so, we wear gloves to protect the artifacts, um, and it's always just better for us to do that so that's why she's got gloves on um so when did you get the boring gray though because usually we have uh, like green or purple or yeah blue. um i don't really i'm not working well I with my took, color scheme i took those from my husband oh great <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was hard to get nitro gloves for a little while there yes, so i haven't reordered any so that's why we have gray um everybody's using gloves these days they are especially the ones we use so yeah we don't use the white cotton gloves anymore no, um that's not a thing not a thing for us <laughs> um so what's our in, museums in general not just no us. not, it's not just, a yeah. thing for museum professionals in general yeah either some still use them some do uh, either washing your hands or or the gloves um so what it, i'm not saying what's in the box but the the items actually arrived while we were closed for during oh, this okay. COVID period. Okay. So, um, so the reason why Amy never saw them is because when something comes in immediately in this new COVID world that we are living in, um, I take it up immediately to a quarantined area and for three to seven days it sits in that area and nobody touches it. Mm -hmm. um, so. These have. So uh, we don't get the COVID. So we don't get the COVID, and uh, this has been well past its quarantine period, so it is good to go. Um, but yeah, go ahead and open it up. Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> the unveiling, the reveal. Yeah, the okay. Okay, and in this box, there's only two there's items. Only two items. Okay. They can kind of see what it is. I yeah. Kind of see. All right. This. Okay. I, I think I might know what this is. I, 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 <laughs> I think I know what this is. Okay. You, yeah, you were. All right. For those who can't see, it is a cow. It's, it's, it doesn't move. Wooden? I, Am I allowed to look at the bottom? Yeah, I think I'm Okay. Good. It's wooden, I think. Is this yeah, wood? Yes. Wood. Okay. Definitely wood. It's got a bell on his neck. <laughs> Why on earth we would take a cow, a statue of a cow? Let's it's a great story. Yeah, on the back of it, it says, written... It's the underneath, actually. Underneath. Oh, yeah, it's not the back. No, it's not. Um, I'll read it out, but there's some writing on the back. Okay, let's see. To R.H. Northcutt. Mm -hmm. I know who that is. From George Muse. Yes. Does that name sound familiar? Like muses? It is like muses. <laughs> September 9th, 1907, mm -hmm. bought by George Muse in Lucerne, Switzerland. Yes. Okay, George Muse. All right, so I don't know a lot about George Muse, but I do know Muse's department store was a store here. Or Atlanta. No, Atlanta. It was Atlanta. Atlanta. It was in Atlanta, yes. Mm -hmm. But people went downtown to yes. buy, buy. We have items from Muses in our textile collection. Yes, here. we do. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, let's. this has got a couple of um, aspects to it. So, first off, R.H. Northcutt would mm -hmm. be, let me guess. Go ahead. Robert Hole. Yes. Woo! All right. Ding Robert ding. Hole Northcutt. Okay. And this is 1907, so, okay, that's early on. Um, Robert Hull Northcutt, was that Guy's grandfather? It is. Okay, 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 okay. All right, so, um, Guy Northcutt, who is still, he's a uh, former board member, now friends group member here. He has been, uh, um, since we opened the museum, he's been a board member here. But, oh, yeah. Uh, Northcutt Stadium at Marietta High School was named after his father, mm -hmm. and, um, Guy is actually a junior. His father was a senior and fought in World War One. Yes. And and the North Cuts go way back. I mean, oh, early way on to the early settlers for yes, sure. Yes, beginnings of our because they're tied in with the Andersons. 
who and there was yes. Anderson that actually laid out the plan for the square back in the 1830s. So, Robert Holnorcutt, okay, this is a cow. At some point, they owned a dairy. Yes. Okay. She's doing good. Was it the Kennesaw Dairy? Mm -hmm. Okay. Located close to Kennesaw Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Not, yeah. Yes. I don't remember the exact kind location. Of not far from like the Elizabeth area because I was reading. Okay. On yeah, this that, side of the mountain. Yeah, yeah. This side. Yeah. Okay. And so I'm guessing. Mr. Muse brought this back to Mr. Northcutt because he had a dairy, mm -hmm. and he just thought he liked cows. Yes. <laughs> so is that it? <laughs> well, when you see the other item, it'll make the okay. cow make more sense. Okay, so there's the cow. <laughs> there's the cow. But yeah, um, so Mr. Northcutt... Um, this is like the SATs. That's just I funny. mean, he just okay. loved this cow, and so when he <laughs> downsized recently... Um, he decided that the cow needed to come here. Uh, but the other story goes that um, Robert Hall, um, besides owning the dairy, owned or, or helped operate the hosiery mill. Oh, right. Of course. Sure. Uh, Marietta Knitting. Yes. And the story goes is that... Which Mr. is up on Session Street. Yeah. So Mr. Muse uh, was... Somebody was selling socks in his department store in Atlanta. And the customer said, oh, I don't need socks because I bought direct from the hosiery company. And Mr. Muse got really mad because his friend, Mr. Norcutt, was operating and selling direct, Out the to, back the, door. Uh, direct to the customers. <laughs> so Mr. Muse said to Mr. Norcutt, we are not going to be friends anymore if you keep selling direct to uh, the, the customer. So Marietta Knitting at that point stopped selling mm. direct wholesale to the customer. They would only sell to their employees. Okay. And it's all because of Mr. Muse. So he was happy and gave him a cow. Well, then... this, was, this would have been before that. Oh, okay. Th their friendship was going oh, okay. Yeah, okay. a little bit later. <laughs> but so you know, it's all those Give little... me that cow back if you're going to sell yeah. him out the back door, man. Maybe that's how the little, uh, his little horniner got broken. Oh, also. yeah. He Anger. probably got angry and threw it across the room. Yeah, like it. Scarlet through the base. That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So this next item is a ledger. Okay. One similar. We have many ledgers in our archival collection. Now, don't worry. It's backwards okay. to us, but it won't be to them. Okay. I tested that. Sure. <laughs> oh, that's what you're testing. <laughs> that's okay. what I tested. Okay. So I'm going to. Oh, open and the, the markers in there are not me. They were already in there. So Just, it came as is. That is as okay. is. Okay. I already like what I see on the front page. I knew it. I knew she'd like <laughs> I this. I like this. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'm just going to tell you all right now, she's going to look through this quickly for us, but I'm pretty sure she's going to be looking hard at this uh, for the next few days because well, it's, it, it's a lot of information for one video, but um, but yeah, it's it's pretty epic. Okay, first off, first place. Before I get to the second play, this is the one that I'm really, okay, eyes immediately drawn to that. Okay, but this has got a year of temple piece of paper posted to it and from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize any names. There's McClatchy mm -hmm. from Marietta. There's a McClatchy name from Marietta. It's a list of the guys, I guess, in the temple. Oh, there's Robert Hall. He's on there, Oh, too. okay. Oh, there he is, Northcutt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so this is Robert Hall's, mm -hmm. I'm guessing. Okay. Uh, Jason J... Oh, James. James J. Daniel. That sounds familiar. J.J. Really J. Daniel School. Mm -hmm. And Judge J.J. J. Daniel. Judge. Yeah. Dr. Smith, Pastor M.E. Church. So, Methodist Church. Mm -hmm. And Young Dr. Rambo was made master maze on, I don't know what that says, Friday? Really? Friday? 18th. February. February. Oh, yeah. February. February 18th, oh, yeah. 1916. February 18th, 1916. Okay. But then the letter itself has an earlier date of oh, 1911. So this, this, um, Okay, so this is maybe when he was made a Shriner mm -hmm. in November 6, 1911. Okay. But that really doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the book. I'm okay. Just, just okay. okay, so this blue piece of paper, automatically I can tell it's older because um, typically mid-19th century paper was blue. So mm -hmm. anytime you see this light blue color, you know, especially with the, the script, the ink pen uh, script that's on here, you know it's going to be an older document. So this says Georgia Cobb County, December 7th, 1855. 
for those who may or may not know, we do not have many uh, artifact, well, items that paper documents in mm -hmm. particular that date back this long, this far pre-Civil War, because a lot of our official documents that were, were assumed to have burned, burned. when yeah. the courthouse was burned by the Union Army in November of 1864. Some items did make it out, though, because the Georgia Archives of Morrow, yes, they, they do have some, have some earlier item, uh, paperwork, official documents in their records mm -hmm. down there. We have some, but not a whole lot. So, and it, it's it's because it comes. It was passed down person to person within a family, like in a book mm -hmm. or something. And that's how we get it. It's it very saved. yeah. It was saved that way. Um, to be honest, I didn't read the document. I just I let her have that fun. Well, this indenture made the seventeenth day of December in the year of our Lord one thousand eight hundred and fifty-five between JJ Northcutt of the County of Cobb. That would be JJ. that would be Jesse James Northcutt, um, and he had uh, a business here on the square. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to know more about him, though, I do a really good bio for the cemetery tours. Oh, again. cemetery tours. Yeah. Is JJ RH's dad? Yes. Okay. Uh, with one part LL, I don't know what that last name is. Which? Which? Mitch? Oh, I don't know. Of the county of Newton, of other parts. Oh, we got a train. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. No okay. train to our topic. Um, today. for the sum of seventy-five dollars. So it looks like they are. You're selling land. Le yeah, selling land. <clears throat> that district in the third. Uh, part of it's in Cobb. It looks like part of it's in Paulding. Okay. So yeah, so that is a land deed document that is pretty cool from 1855 so that's that's some early that's some early early stuff there okay cool so i'll just flip through these are so, so this is a scrapbook so essentially they it looks like somebody took which is common took a ledger that was used for, by businesses and turned it into a scrapbook and often that means there's two layers of information within one book one is the scrapbook that you want to preserve and save those stories of who who made the scrapbook why are these things important to them mm -hmm. and then underneath often sometimes you can't get to the information because to remove the scrapbook part would damage the paper anyway wasn't there a term for that because we did a scrapbook yes. exhibit what was it called e i don't know there's was a term. it grangerizing yes it was thank you i was waiting to see if she got it i knew it but i was testing it grangerizing yes so when we do right. another scrapbook exhibit 10 years from now we'll put this one yes. out here because i mean yes. we just that's right. Did that one. Oh, we took that down last year. Oh, it my feels God. like we it just does did feel it, like for a bit of I know. I also hear something on the Marietta Knitting Company. So there's a notice. That's interesting. We've got um, this is a letter to Mr. R.H. Northcutt from Mr. Cooper and Sons in Pennsylvania. I'm imagining these are. Oh, there's a Jersey Bulletin, so we're getting into the cows. We're getting into the cows. Okay. That's why they Jersey use. cows. Um, so a check that was paid. So the, the farm itself oh, really cool. is known more for not necessarily milk production, but more for the um, animals that he bred, and the, especially the the bulls and the cows that he had, he was known, they were award winning. Um, and so a lot of these pictures that we will see in just a minute, um, are, I told you this video is going to be okay. way shorter than what she <laughs> wants. Okay. I know. See, I can go on, but yes, this is funny. Will. I just read this little note in here and, um, I'll see if I can safely hold it up, but it says it's Atlanta, Georgia, October 9th, 1912. It says, Dear Mr. Northcutt, I want to thank you for the fine bantams you sent me today. Bantam chickens. Oh. Okay. I now will, I know, I know I will enjoy them very much. Your friend, John U. Grant Jr., and then under it, someone, maybe Mr. Northcutt, has handwritten, this little fellow, six years old owns the Grant Building in Atlanta. 
I didn't own a building at six, did you? No, I didn't, but you know. Dang. <laughs> we have to look into that. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so let's see if I can lift this up carefully. Yeah, so that's the problem with some of our older books, you know, the binding is, there's the letter right there. Yeah. And then down here is uh, the Episcopal Church, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is. The Marietta Episcopal, St. James Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. Um, oh no, this says First Baptist. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I should have known better. Uh, my apologies. That's First Baptist. They're a good Baptist family. They said so somewhere, didn't they? Oh no, that was earlier. Okay. But he's buried in the Episcopal Cemetery. That's why I got confused. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe when he got married. Maybe. Uh -huh. So but, we have lots of cows. I love cows. I do too. I love cows. But when you keep going through, you're going to get pictures that aren't just, uh, like, Images of cows oh, uh, from yes. magazines or like the, the train papers on selling and breeding of cows. Here's the Kennesaw Mountain Dairy, um, Marietta, Georgia. There's not a date on it, but um, right down there. Yep. You can see that. It's pretty cool. And they like their cows. <laughs> oh, here's another one. Well, they like, I, I didn't pull this one from uh, the archives, but Mr. Northcutt, uh, I want to say around 2005, had brought up, and this is what makes Amy and my day, is when we get a box of like photos or documents, Absolutely. it really is like the best day ever. Uh, so he brought up a, a box of photographs of his family members. Uh, the Northcutts married into pretty much every fam early Marietta family that you can think you got of. Andersons, Blackwells, Montgomerys, uh, uh, Winters. Um, they're all they're all in there. But um, included in that donation was later these uh, images called stereographs, and I, I should have brought one down. But it's two of the same image on one card, and you would put it in a holder so it would make a three-dimensional image, kind of like the stereo viewers that when we were kids, that kind of idea. But um, the cows were loved so much that they made stereographs of the cows so that you could see the cow in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love a cow in 3D? I, I mean, I, I mean, this is cool. Here's a photograph, Kennesaw Mountain Farm. And this is the interior of the barn where they kept the cows. All their stalls right there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Very cool. Okay. So, yeah. So, see, this is the fun thing. We can just sit here and go through all these. That's June 1st, 1910. So, these are from dating So, some of these, I'll scan these for you guys, and um, we'll post them, and you can have a better idea of what those images look like. And, um, again, it, it, the, the cows all have names, and it was all about which bull sired which you know it was it, but um that was oh, a cool why, are, why is that where are we why i, I don't know where we are in that picture <laughs> to be honest what uh, why what what <laughs> so this says uh something minor henry yeah that would be right henry um, minor yes something and lumber contractor cole C-O something. And so there's a building here. It looks like it's in town. And the Minards were in, were they in town though? Um, I, that, I don't know as much about the Minards. Um, is it related to Mary Minor? Yes. Mary Minor is the... Marion. Marion. That's right. Everybody calls her yes, Mary, that's but it's right. actually Marion. That's right. Marion um, Minor. Okay, and she's in... The Episcopal Cemetery. Yes. It's the mother statue with the two babies, the weeping mother. Um, so that was his first wife, and then he married, after she died, he married again. But, um, I don't know, maybe That's we should cool. uh, figure out where that is. And I know. And I'll scan that. And yeah. We'll put we'll that up, too. Try to figure out where they're coming. I don't recognize the building. No, the building didn't look familiar to me, either. So, if it's in town, that building's no longer here in that form. Right, yeah, yeah. Because it has a very warehouse -y kind of feel. But all of these are, like, pictures of the cows uh, and I just nice. this is probably I think the most That's iconic cool. yeah, is, is the silo um, yes. that that silo don't worry it's just a little piece of but yeah. that I mean 
Mary, we must remember Marietta was a heavily agricultural community up until World War II. Now, there were some industries, including, there's a knitting mill, um, including the knitting mill, Glover Machine Works, but it really is all about agriculture. I mean, we had peach orchards, we had dairy farms, we had all sorts of um, products that were coming. I think at one point, Cobb County was like the biggest producer of peaches early in the early in the 20th century. There's some, or we like got our, some good Georgia peaches you now. You know it. All right, so here is a cool picture. This is the building of the the whole proof, but Marietta Knitting, Marietta Knitting. Knitting Company was what it was first. Yeah. And then it went to Whole Proof, and then it went to McLaren. Was Champion not in there? Oh, Champion's in Ch there somewhere. I think Champion's between Whole Proof. And yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is the building, and this is now Lofts. So the building's still mm -hmm. back there on Session Street, behind Sessions and Lacey and that kind yeah. of area up there, Tower Road, behind the hospital, kind of over by Lewis Park. Lewis Park, yeah. where we've done a video. Mm -hmm. We haven't done one on the mills, though. We yeah. could do that. Um, but that's building it. That's kind of cool. That that picture I've seen before. That yeah. was probably... This is 1911. Yeah, one of the more... Because um, I think we have that digitally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now we have the actual. Yay! Um, which we always love. So, I mean, it, I just I just love... I think some of the this cows are named Old Sophie and Sport. <laughs> and it's like... They were almost like pets, though, in a way. Because... Who take? I mean... This it's a, a lot of cows. That's a lot of cows. <laughs> There's a lot of cows here that they want to remember. I know. So very uh, proud of their cows. They are very proud of their cows. And but it was Dorothy. Yeah. And it was it's always Dorothy. referred to uh, Mr. Northcutt. Oh. What does it say about Dorothy? She's the half sister to oh. Noble of something. Yes. Yeah, so, so I mean, it's just it's just like any sort of livestock. They would. It's all about breeding and everything like that. Oh, that looks like a. Uh, it's a. This is somebody a. Somebody had died. Yeah, but. it's a. It's a thank you note after a funeral. Mrs. Melville S. A. Sewell mm. is deeply grateful for your kindness and sympathy. So I guess Mr. Sewell probably passed away. Somebody in the Sewells. Yes. Yeah. This is Jane Northcutt, little girl picture. This is so fun. So. See, fun. I knew she'd like it. That's why I was like, surprise! But the um, the North, the, the farm, he was known as a gentleman farmer. And Robert Hall actually, uh, Robert Hall Northcutt, uh, passed away in 1923. Uh, the farm isn't around anymore. I'm pretty sure the land that was the farm is now incorporated into federal property. Or close to it. Close to it. It uh, may be. There might be a neighborhood, though. There was Actually, though, it might be a neighborhood, or it might be some of the area that became later marble mm, property. Maybe. Mill works back there. There's a yeah. lot of property back there. Ooh, what's this? A receipt. 1898. Received of G.B. Campbell for $90. I don't know what for. Married a knitting company. Mm -hmm. There you go. He bought something, maybe out the back door. Maybe. Hope not. Mr. Muse would get mad. Oh, there's a... Yes. Mr. That picture we've seen before. But mm -hmm. um, Robert Hull's... And Robert Hull married uh, Helen Winters. And uh, we actually have a safe downstairs mm -hmm. in the lobby that... Um, I'll take a picture of it, too. Um, on the inside, uh, it says Kennesaw Mountain Farms. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, it was used at the farm. At the farm. Yes. And then it ended up in Guy Northcutt Jr.'s yes, house, right. and then it ended he up in our lobby, us. and it won't move because it's yeah. heavy. It's big. It, it's not that big. It's just it, no, we got two other ones that are bigger. But uh, the Robert Hall Northcutt married a Winters. They had two sons, Ralph and Guy, mm -hmm. and then the guy that we know is, is the yes. guy. Yeah. But Guy Northcutt Senior, Senior was a lieutenant during World War One. We have pieces of his uniform on display mm -hmm. in our military gallery, and some and photos of him. But there's a photo of him you can see, and he, that that bottom picture is him working. He was in communications, or no, was he? No, not communications. He was in the uh, what's it called where you go get the stuff? Where I can't think. <laughs> he, uh, he were in France. This is a picture of him in France. Dang, May I no. tell you? Uh, taken in Paris on his 26th birthday. Does it say what he did? He he worked 
Oh gosh, people, y'all can comment when you get see. To this, this is point. what happens when we don't it's, do live videos. It's when they they take care of all the supplies. The supply guy. The supply guy. I think that's what he did. Quartermaster. Quartermaster. Ooh, yay! Yay! <laughs> it's a star class. Like it's something. It's not supply yeah, you know, guy. Supply guy. Whatever. Um, Which you know that's kind of interesting because um so his grandfather J.J. Northcutt. Um, also worked as a quartermaster, but during the Civil War. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. They were good at counting. Things. Inventory. Inventory. I'm, I'm all about people who are good at inventory. I like people. This like house is familiar. I'm trying to place it. Church Street. Church Street. Was that the Montgomery house? No. No, that's not. That's not. This, this is North Carolina house. Cut house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just feels so farther back. Like, it's, I think it's because of, of the angle it's at. Yeah. Yeah. But here's an early picture of. The North Cut House on Church Street. One of the North. One Cut of the houses. yeah, not the Craftsman style, yes. more of the brick one, and not not the. Um, okay. Is that the one that just got lime washed? Possibly. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so we. Uh, <laughs> I just uh, this is just funny. There's a picture of a man, just a little little portrait picture of him. It says Major W. Gettys. One of the old guard of Tennessee breeders. I think Famous it's the world over. <laughs> Maybe you used to put like, you know, one of the old guard of Tennessee cow breeders. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Granted, we're reading it wrong. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> back in the day they weren't reading it that way. Bond, well, James Bond. Yeah, no, famous no. world renowned breeder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her name is Sophie. Yeah. So, I mean, so I just, yeah, that's cool. Very cool. That's this is fun stuff. This is the kind of stuff. There's a lot of notes, written, handwritten notes, articles about dairies that mention the families, and photographs. You never know what kind of photographs you're going to get. And that's one of the reasons we did that scrapbook exhibit because a lot of times there are photographs and information in those scrapbooks that we just, you know, we haven't had time or the. Um, capabilities really to digitize all of those yeah. so the only way you ever see them is if you pull them out of the archives and people don't know all the information or photographs that are in all of these and we really don't pull them that often so no, it was a don't. good exhibit to be able to show people how much information you can get from scrapbooks so that's that's very cool i mean and some that was my notes oh here's your notes i didn't need my notes i didn't need, I didn't need, need my notes. notes don't need notes so um yeah that was Fun. your first your first one we're actually uh gonna film another one yes that we will are. go out next week we'll be wearing the same outfits <laughs> though <laughs> but that's okay um and you know if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments make sure that you like our pages and um share the video share the video like. thank uh, you for watching thank and you we'll see you we'll see you next time, time.